15 billion miles from home, a faint whisper travels through the cosmic void at the speed of light. It takes 23 hours to cross the emptiness, carrying the voice of humanity's most distant messenger. This is Voyager 1, a machine that should have died 40 years ago, now calling to us from the edge of forever. But its voice is growing weaker each day, and soon, silence. This is the story of humanity's greatest conversation with the infinite. September 5, 1977, Cape Canaveral. A Titan rocket pierced the Florida sky carrying humanity's most ambitious dream to touch the outer worlds. Voyager 1 was born from a vision called the Grand Tour, a once every 175 year cosmic alignment that would let us visit Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune in a single journey. Budget cuts scaled back the dream, but the essential magic remained. The spacecraft carried 11 scientific instruments, a nuclear heart that would beat for decades, and humanity's greatest message, the golden record. Carl Sagan and his team had encoded the sounds of Earth, laughter, music, the cry of a baby, thunder, the song of whales. They imagined civilizations among distant stars might one day find this cosmic message in a bottle. But first, Voyager had to survive its birth. Just 3.4 seconds of fuel remained when the Centaur stage finally shut down. Three seconds between success and the loss of humanity's greatest explorer. The 1,592-pound craft was now sailing toward Jupiter at 38,000 miles per hour, beginning a journey that would redefine our place in the cosmos. March 5th, 1979. Voyager approached Jupiter like a cosmic tourist, snapping a picture every 96 seconds to create humanity's first time-lapse movie of another world. What it found changed everything. Jupiter had rings, faint gossamer threads invisible from Earth. But the real surprise was hiding on a sulfur-yellow moon called Io. Navigation engineer Linda Morabito was examining a routine image when she spotted something impossible, a crescent of light extending beyond the moon's edge. Active volcanoes, 300 kilometers of sulfur and lava shooting into space. For the first time, we had found active geology beyond Earth. A year later, Saturn awaited. Voyager faced a critical choice, fly by mysterious Titan or continue to Uranus and Neptune. They chose Titan. What they found was a world wrapped in orange haze, with an atmosphere thicker than Earth's, 90% nitrogen, holding secrets we're still unraveling today. Beneath that smog might lie lakes of liquid methane, a world that could teach us about the chemistry of early life itself. By 1990, Voyager had completed its original mission, but the real journey was just beginning. Carl Sagan convinced NASA to turn Voyager's cameras back toward home for one final portrait. From 3.7 billion miles away, Earth appeared as a pale blue dot suspended in a sunbeam, a cosmic moat containing everything we've ever known or loved. Those cameras shut down forever 34 minutes later, too precious to waste on pictures. Now Voyager sailed into the unknown, beyond the realm of planets, toward the edge of the sun's influence itself. The solar system isn't just the planets. It's a vast bubble called the heliosphere, where solar wind creates a boundary with interstellar space. For 35 years, Voyager pushed through this cosmic frontier. In 2004, it crossed the termination shock, where solar wind slows to a whisper. Then, on August 25, 2012, something extraordinary happened. The plasma density jumped 40-fold. The cosmic radiation shifted. Voyager 1 had crossed the heliopause, the first human-made object to enter interstellar space, swimming in the ocean between stars. How do you whisper across 15 billion miles? The answer lies in three massive dishes, 
each the size of a football field, standing sentinel on three continents. The Deep Space Network. In California's Mojave Desert, outside Madrid, and in the Australian outback near Canberra. These 230-foot titans never sleep, following Voyager as Earth turns, maintaining humanity's most tenuous conversation. Each dish weighs 2,970 tons, yet they can point with precision finer than the width of a human hair. Their surfaces must remain smooth to within half an inch across three acres of metal. At their hearts lie ruby masers cooled to 4.5 degrees above absolute zero, so sensitive they could detect the energy from a single snowflake hitting the ground. From Voyager's side, the conversation is just as remarkable. A 12-foot dish and a 22-watt transmitter, less power than a bright light bulb, somehow reaches across the cosmic void. By the time those 22 watts travel 15 billion miles, they arrive as less than one attowatt, a billionth of a billionth of a watt, 20 billion times weaker than a digital watch. The inverse square law is merciless. Double the distance, quarter the signal strength. Every mile Voyager travels makes it harder to hear. The conversation is painfully slow. Commands crawl across space at light speed, taking 23 hours just to reach Voyager. Its response takes another 23 hours to return. A simple hello becomes a two-day ordeal. Yet somehow, this impossible conversation continues. Engineers use error-correcting codes that rebuild data from scattered fragments. They array multiple antennas like a cosmic choir, combining whispers into intelligible signals. They correlate and integrate signals over long periods, teasing information from what seems like random noise. The data rate has dropped from 115,000 bits per second at Jupiter to just 160 bits per second today. Voyager transmits data slower than the earliest computer modems, yet every bit is precious. Measurements of magnetic fields, cosmic rays, and charged particles in the space between stars is engineering poetry, the marriage of massive Earth-based infrastructure with a probe no bigger than a small car, maintaining a conversation across distances that would take 300 lifetimes to drive. Deep in Voyager's belly, three nuclear batteries have been beating steadily for 47 years. Radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, powered by the radioactive decay of plutonium-238. Each pallet of plutonium generates heat through atomic decay, converted to electricity by thermoelectric couples. It's nuclear power at its most elegant. No moving parts, no maintenance, just physics slowly unwinding. But time is the enemy. The plutonium has a half-life of 87 years, and the thermoelectric converters gradually degrade. Voyager started with 470 watts in 1977. Today, it has just 267 watts, losing four more each year. One by one, systems shut down. First, the cameras in 1990, their job complete. Instrument heaters as power became too precious to waste on warmth. Remarkably, Many instruments continue working far below their tested limits, surviving in the minus 200 degree cold of interstellar space. Scientists prioritize fields and particles instruments, magnetometers, plasma wave detectors, cosmic ray telescopes, the sensors that can decode the secrets of interstellar space. The cosmic ray subsystem fell silent in February 2025 the low-energy charged particle instrument will follow by year's end. Each shutdown brings a moment of mourning, another voice from the cosmic frontier falling silent. By the late 2020s, perhaps only one or two instruments will remain, clinging to the last vestiges of nuclear fire, sending final whispers from the edge of known space. July 2023 Deep Space Network operators stare at their screens in disbelief. Voyager 2's signal has vanished. A routine command has somehow twisted the spacecraft's antenna 
two degrees away from Earth. 12 billion miles away, humanity's second messenger is deaf and mute, tumbling through interstellar space with no way home. But the engineers remember something. Voyager's designers, brilliant paranoids from the 1970s, built in a failsafe. Multiple times a year, the spacecraft automatically resets its orientation. On August 4th, the Canberra dish broadcasts an interstellar shout, an amplified command racing across the void. 37 hours of silence, then triumph. The signal returns. Voyager 2 is home. But Voyager 1 faces a different nightmare. November 2023. The spacecraft starts transmitting gibberish, endless streams of ones and zeros, instead of precious scientific data. Months of digital forensics reveal the culprit. A single corrupted memory chip in the flight data subsystem poisoned by cosmic radiation or simple age. Engineers face an impossible puzzle. They cannot repair the chip from 15 billion miles away. Instead, they must perform software surgery, relocating critical code scattered across the spacecraft's tiny memory deleting obsolete Jupiter flyby routines, updating thousands of memory references. The fix requires dividing essential code into fragments and hiding them in unused corners of memory. The mathematics are inexorable. Four watts lost each year. Critical systems failing. Instruments shutting down one by one. By 2025, Science operations will largely cease. By the early 2030s, Voyager will lack power to run its transmitter. By 2036, even if somehow it continues broadcasting, it will be too far for Earth's antennas to hear. The silence will be total and permanent. Yet even in death, Voyager's journey continues. At 38,000 miles per hour, it will sail through the Milky Way for eons. In 40,000 years, it will pass within 1.6 light years of the star Gliese 445, closer to another stellar system than we are to our nearest neighbor. In 200 million years, it will complete its first orbit around the galaxy. For billions of years after our sun has swollen into a red giant and perhaps consumed the Earth, Voyager will continue its lonely vigil carrying the golden record through starfields yet unborn. Should some future civilization find it in the cosmic deep, they will discover not just the technical specifications of 1970s Earth, but something more profound. Proof that a small world orbiting an ordinary star once dared to dream of touching the infinite and succeeded. As Voyager's voice grows fainter with each passing day, we are witnessing the end of humanity's first conversation with the cosmos beyond our solar system. This tiny craft, no bigger than a car, has shown us volcanic moons, mysterious atmospheres, and the vast ocean of space between the stars. Soon, the last radio whisper will fade into cosmic background noise. But Voyager's true message isn't in the data it sends, or even the golden record it carries. It's in the audacious act itself. The declaration that conscious beings on a pale blue dot refuse to accept the boundaries of their birth, that curiosity itself is worth the journey into forever.